There I did a hike to Minoyama Park up in Saitama Prefecture just north of Tokyo. It was a really easy day hike from the city. Now before I get to the actual video and all of the explanation on how to get there and all the usual stuff, I want to kind of mention two things. The one thing um, in this video I kind of introduced photography as part of the hiking thing as well just because I kind of like photography so I did is I had the head cam on me and then I took pictures and then I showed you the pictures as part of the hike and yeah I just kind of like photography that's why I thought it would be cool to kind of combine hiking and photography but I don't know what, what do you think did you like it I hope I hope I can do it again in the future but just maybe concentrate on one kind of picture spot and then getting there hiking there and then taking the picture kind of more of a well making the picture something special um, i think it would be cool and the second thing that's kind of related to that is during the part where i was doing the head cam and the photography i had my tripod as usually attached to the back of my uh, backpack or to the side of my backpack and what happens sometimes during that 30 minute time where i was taking pictures is that the screw that is attached to the bottom of the tripod to the plate and attaches the camera to the tripod uh, must have fallen off somewhere as soon as i realized that i didn't have any well I didn't have a way to tr mount my camera uh, on the tripod anymore <clears throat> which means that the section hiking down was done in a more POV style because I couldn't attach my uh, camera to the tripod but it was unfortunate but thankfully it was already at a later stage in the hike but yeah, with that out of the way let's get into the actual hiking information the hike starts or ends in one of two stations um, in the Chichibu Saitama line it's either Oyahana station or Wado Kuroya station and it can be done in basically both ways you can hike up from Oyahana station or you can hike up from Wado Kuroya station and then hike down the other way I did it from Oyahana station. I think the best option to get there is to take the Shonan Shinjuku line all the way to Kumagaya and then transfer there to the Chichibo Saitama line. Now the Chichibo Saitama line is a very small local line so what you'll have to keep in mind is that you don't you cannot use your IC card on the train or to get on the train so you will have to actually pay in cash to get a ticket. Another way of getting there that I did was on the JR Hachiko line. I went all the way to Yoshi station and then transferred there to the Chichibo Saitama line. From either station it's a roughly 10 minute walk to the start of the trail and then from there it's a walk through the forest essentially. Now this is a really easy hike, probably the easiest hike that I've done so far in Japan. It really only takes one and a half to two hours to reach the top from either station and it is a very very gentle climb up. Um, it doesn't have any particular steep sections, there's kind of one, but it's nothing compared to any other hike that I've done so far. In my case I did the hike during the rainy season after a day that saw tons of rain, which made parts of the hike very slippery A and also kind of, well, almost looked like a small river that's running through it, so I got my feet properly wet. And yeah, that's just something to keep in mind if you want to do it in like the rainy season or after a day, day of heavy rain, parts of the hike will be very wet. From Oyahana station there are two main roads to the top. There is the Kanto Furai no Michi and then the other one, I don't know what that's called, but I took the Kanto Furai no Michi. What I learned on this hike is the, the Kanto Furai no Michi, which also appeared in earlier hikes in Nokogiriyama and I believe in Mount Jimba as well, is actually a kind of a loop hike that uh, circles around Tokyo and all of the other six surrounding prefectures and overall it's around I think 1800 kilometers or 1100 miles um, and it's split between 160 different sections and the cool thing is if you complete all different sections including taking um, pictures you kind of each section is split between prefectures so you can complete one prefecture and then go on to the next one and so on and you get a certificate for each prefecture but once you complete all six prefectures all 160 hikes you kind of get one big certificate um, that says that you've completed it all uh, which sounds insane and I mean it would be cool to do that but 1800 kilometers take me a couple months <laughs> it will take me a couple months um, but I might kind of do more of these Furiai no Michi hikes um, split up you know, in like day hikes and everything but anyways back to the hike 
On top of the hike there is kind of a park which is also accessible by car so there will be a lot of people who are not actually hiking but like just day trippers. The park itself is fairly big and it has some really nice views out on the kind of Saitama plateau I guess. Um, it also has an observation platform that you can climb from there you also have some great views. Yeah, the main draw of this hike and the reason why I did it was because of flowers. So flowers are depending on the season abundant in this kind of mountain. For example in spring you have beautiful sakura there, in May you have poppy seed kind of fields that are really bright and red and in June towards the end of June and early July that is when you have peak hydrangea season which are my favorite flowers in Japan. It is just really beautiful kind of bushy flowers. Interesting fact about hydrangea when they grow they are all white and depending on the kind of the consistency of the earth they will change to different colors so they might be pink they might be purple they might be blue different shades of blue they might be multicolored interesting fact anyways um, hydrangea are abundant in this area they have this really beautiful slope with all of the hydrangea and they also drew a lot of crowds um, so that's kind of the main draw and honestly probably the only <laughs> draw of this hike are these beautiful hydrangeas yeah other than that there's really not much else there there's kind of a small information center but yeah um, that's kind of it I would recommend maybe spending one to two hours on the top if you are doing during flower season outside of flower season I don't even think you need an hour you need maybe like 30 minutes or something to see the observation platform and that's it if you hike down towards Wadakuraya station there is a kind of a day trip onsen where you can go for a hot spring bath um, maybe in winter or in fall that would be nice um, I just hurried down basically because I wanted to catch the train as I said the hike is very easy so you don't need any specific hiking equipment you can do it in any trail runners or even sneakers also the hike is very covered in trees so plenty of shade except on the top but other than that you don't need any kind of special special sunscreen or um, a hat or anything on the top there are vending machines that sell drinks at normal prices not the kind of the extreme markup that you saw on Mount Tsukuba so you can get a bottle half a liter, liter bottle of tea or water for a hundred yen which is what you would pay anywhere else they also have these kind of snack stands um, but they were closed at the time that I was there so it might be only open on the weekends or during peak season but yeah they had some reasonably priced uh, fried food like fried chicken and fried potatoes and everything I still brought some food along so yeah you can bring something for yourself to have a picnic up there and bring maybe like a liter of water and then refill up top but yeah there is the option of getting food as well and one thing that you should definitely bring is cash because as I said the Chichibu Saitama line is cash only so if you don't have if you only bring your IC card or a credit card you won't be able to get on um, you have to buy the ticket in advance at the vending machine um, that you get on whatever station it is, Kamagaya station or whatever, uh, or Yoshi station and then you get a paper ticket and then once you exit the station you just fr uh, give the paper ticket to a station staff and that's it. Don't really check at which station you got on though so you could have you could go buy any ticket like the cheapest one and then but yeah don't do that. Be, be honorable, be good. There were kind of warning signs about bears and boars at the bottom of the hike but I didn't end up seeing any there might be some snakes as well but I didn't see any on this hike and yeah really other than that there's nothing particularly dangerous on this hike um, the only thing that you should take care of is again bring money because you won't be able to get on a train and second about the train also check when the train is leaving check the time table when you arrive at whatever station you're coming from if you miss the train it's a very local line so the train might not come for another hour or even more sometimes so yeah if you don't want to be like sitting in the middle of nowhere for an hour then I would recommend checking the table uh, train table or the table train time train table times ahead let's be clear I wouldn't recommend this hike for anything other than seeing the beautiful flowers in whatever season you go I believe they have autumn as well they have autumn colors um, they have as I said hydrangea in June they have some sakura I think they have some azaleas as well in August or in March I don't remember exactly there's a website I'll link it down below where you can check kind of check out which um, flowers are blooming and which time but yeah other than flowers this hike is not really that spectacular now what it does have is that it's the only freestanding mountain in Saitama prefecture so it's the only mountain where there's nothing around it so you have kind of beautiful 360 degrees view views but uh, the views weren't really that impressive because you're only looking down on like you know kind of in the, like urban Saitama which is really not that exciting trust me 
But if you're looking for a very easy hike, then this is also a good option. And it is in the Chichibo Saitama region, which has tons of other hikes and also lots of great nature and also some onsen ryokans to stay at. So if you want to stay there, maybe overnight and then do it as a day trip hike or something, that's also an option. Yeah, I was really happy to see hydrangea because as I said, there are my favorite flowers in Japan and I kind of felt like this summer I didn't really get my fair share of them. Um, and right now around this area, which is not as high up as the mountain, they are already kind of starting to, well, uh, decay or whatever you say, it's just, the petals aren't as vibrant and as colorful anymore, but up on the mountain they're really beautiful and also had kind of the views plus the hydrangeas that was special. So that was really cool. Yeah, really happy about that. Um, I might maybe do the hike again in fall or maybe some other hike in that general region. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the hike. I hope you enjoyed the explanation of the hike. If you want to know any other details or if you have any questions, please, as always, do ask them in the comments down below. Happy to answer anything that I can. And yeah, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing, um, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.